Sometimes, the question is so straightforward that all you have to do is take out the common factor in both terms and you'll be fine. But there are times where you have to do a lot more than that, and this is one of those times. Let's get down to it. Given a polynomial like this, with just two terms, you might be tempted to think all I have to do is look for the term that is common to this and this, and once I can take that out, I should be done. And that's what we're going to do now and see if there's a lot more to what's going on. Let's see that. So this expression, I can tell that there's p here, there's also p here. Also there's a number 4, I'm sure 4 will also divide 3 to 4. Remember the rules of divisibility. If the last two digits form a number divisible by 4, then that number is divisible by 4, so I can tell. So I can take out 4, I can also take out p, but there's a negative sign here. You don't want to have your leading coefficient being a negative number, so you want to also take out the negative. So this is what we're going to have. We're going to have negative 4p to the fifth um, plus 3 to 4p, oh, this is the question. Um, if you take negative 4 and p out, what you're going to have left will be negative 4. And what's left will be p, or oh, negative 4p, because p is also here. So all bit left will be 4p to the 4th, plus, if you divide 3 to 4 by 4, you're going to have 8, and this is going to be 1. So that's 81. That's all you've got. You've got 81. However, there's a problem here. Because when you take out the negative 4, this sign cannot be positive anymore. It has to be negative. So we've got to get rid of that positive and change it into a negative sign. So that's going to be negative. So you have negative 4p into that. What can you do to what's inside? Every time there is an exponent or there are two terms you're separating or you're subtracting from each other and you notice that one of them can be squared, you quickly think about the difference of two squares. Remember, difference of two squares is when you have a situation where x squared minus y squared, uh, it becomes x minus y and x plus y. Okay, so we want to see if we can express these two as squares, as a difference of squares. And I think we can, because this expression is going to become negative 4p into this p to the fourth can be written as p squared squared. You see that? That's going to save us from trouble. Minus this is 9 squared. So now you have p squared squared minus 9 squared. So that gives you uh, a difference of two squares. So when you open this up and make it look like this, you're going to end up with p squared minus 9 p squared plus 9. Let's write that. So this is going to end up being negative 4p into p squared minus 9 and p squared plus 9. That's what you've got. Okay. Now, with this, we're not done because another situation has been created. We have another difference of two squares. Okay. So this difference of two squares can be written as, remember, that p squared minus 9 is the same thing as p squared minus 3 squared, which also looks like this. So we can break this down and write it as p minus 3 and p plus 3. So we're ending up with this. We're going to break this down into these two, and then your final expression will be negative 4p into p minus 3, p plus 3, and you have p squared plus 9. So this is what you get as your final factoring of this simple binomial. Okay, um, always look out for difference of two squares. There's nothing special about the sum of two squares, okay? But the difference of two squares will always need to be expressed this way. So this expression 
is actually this expression. When you multiply these out, you'll end up getting this back. I hope you learned something in this video. Um, I'll put up some other videos that look like this, but you want to make sure that you focus on the most important things. Difference of two squares, some questions will come up with difference of two cubes or the sum of two cubes. Well, the sum of two cubes, the difference of two cubes, all have, um, they have a, a common property which I will not be covering in this video. I'm going to bring that up in another video. Okay. Please make sure you share this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you learned something from it and subscribe. And um, I'll be happy to read any of your comments in the comment section. My name is Newton Okewaye and I want to tell you never ever stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. See you in the next video. Bye bye.